of the list of 20 names he was given, the new leader of the Taxal clearly had the greatest potential. Bindrawale had become well known for urging village Sikhs to abstain from drink and drugs and not cut their hair. His Back to Sikh Basics campaign touched a nerve and he was baptizing young men and women in their hundreds. My guide to the complicated world of Indian politics is the Mark Tully, who for 22 years was the BBC's chief correspondent in India. Throughout 1984, his reports were a lifeline for British Indians, anxious for news. Bindranwale was chosen in part because of his extreme religious views and because it was thought that compared with the rather tired, elderly leaders of the Akali Dal, compromised in various ways, here was a young guy who was in fact a devout and practicing Sikh. And it must have been very tempting to him because obviously what the Congress were telling him was, you come along with us and we'll make you the... Uh, ruler of Punjab in effect really. So Congress needed someone to sing their tune? Who could I think be made to sing their tune might be a better way of putting it, someone who could be groomed and really it was more to take a stand against the Akalis than to um, uh, sing the Congress tune. Do you think Bindrawale was a natural politician? No, he wasn't really a natural politician. Uh, he was much more a natural fanatical religious leader than a natural politician. Mark met Bindrawale on a number of occasions and found him to be an intimidating man. Uh, I remember one thing which happened to me when I was at a press conference and uh, being a bit of a fidgety sort of person, my foot uh, almost, because we were all sitting on the floor of course, almost touched his sword. And then Bindranwale looked at me and I really almost thought to myself, God, this sword's going to be used on me for this. Uh, he, was, uh, he was a frightening figure, there's no doubt about that. Bindranwale generates strong feelings. What some saw as frightening, others saw as inspiring. They believed he was merely upholding Sikh rights and fighting heresy. Some even hoped he'd bring about their dream of a Sikh state called Khalistan. But in the early 80s, Bindrawale and his followers were repeatedly accused of intimidating and murdering their opponents. In September 1982, the owner of a newspaper chain critical of Bindrawale was shot dead. Bindrawale was suspected of masterminding the killing and arrested. What happened next was a turning point. Court proceedings began, but then to the surprise of many, he was released without charge. The government had arranged Bindrawale's freedom, believing he was more used to them out of prison, campaigning against the Akali Dal party. He celebrated with a triumphant drive around Delhi. Bindrawale was seen as a hero who had stood up to the government and won. He may have felt that he could now achieve greater support opposing the government than working with them. Mark Tully has his own theory why Bindrawale turned against his Congress allies. During the raid to arrest Bindrawale, the police accidentally or deliberately destroyed his most precious possessions. During the arrest, the police managed to burn every sermon that Bindrawale had ever preached because Bindrawale had a secretary who used to write down every sermon that he preached. And thereafter, Bindrawale would frequently, when attacking the government, say, what can you say? about someone who kills your children, his children being his sermons. And this really does seem to have been something which went into him very sharply. In June 1982, Bindrawale and a group of his followers moved into part of the Golden Temple complex. His critics said he wanted sanctuary to avoid another arrest. His supporters that he wished to be close to the spiritual center of his faith. For me, the emotions I feel as I get close to the Golden Temple are hard to describe. There's a strong sense of excitement because it's here that I feel at peace with God. This is the place that makes me feel more connected to my faith than anywhere else in the world. This 
is the Golden Temple or Darbar Sahib as Sikhs know it. The reason that this place is so special is because there are the Holy Scriptures, the Guru Granth Sahib, and that's where pilgrims pay their respects in their thousands every day. The temple has a doorway on each side. That's to symbolize access to all, even other faiths. One of the first things I always do at the Golden Temple is to recite prayers from the Holy Scriptures. Although I'm surrounded by thousands of pilgrims, nothing distracts me. So how was this peace shattered? How did the 1984 attack happen? In the early 80s, the Punjab was caught in a spiral of violence, provoked mainly, it's alleged, by Bindrawale's supporters stirring up communal hatred in their fight against the Hindu Raj. Sikhs and Hindus desecrated each other's temples. Buses were hijacked and the Hindu passengers separated from Sikhs and then shot. When the police searched for militants, they were often what they termed encounters, but what others called the killings of Sikhs. This merely strengthened Bindrawale's cause. Meanwhile, his status grew. Pilgrims to Amritsar were leaving their offerings at Bindrawale's feet rather than at the Golden Temple. Children were brought to him to be blessed. In November 1983, in a deeply symbolic move, he transferred his headquarters into the Akal Dakht, the center of Sikh political power. As far as the government was concerned, Bindrawale was out of control. Rajiv Gandhi, now the rising star of the Congress party after the death of his brother Sanjay, called for him to be expelled from the Golden Temple. Tell him to come and try was Bindrawale's reply. <laughs> It was clear to journalists who visited the Agal duct that Bindrawale was getting ready for a fight. The scene was now set for a terrible and final showdown. On the 1st of June, a Sikh officer named Major General Brar arrived in Amritsar to coordinate the army plans to capture Bindrawale. Still hopeful that some sort of settlement could be reached, Indira Gandhi made an appeal on the 2nd of June to the people of the Punjab. Don't shed blood, she said, shed hatred. It failed. The army received the order to proceed. As tanks and troops enclosed the complex, Bra instructed his soldiers not to fire on the Golden Temple or the Agal Dakht without direct orders. A curfew was imposed and all journalists expelled from the city. The operation, codenamed Blue Star, had begun. It's quite clear to me that a siege of the temple has started. General Bra sent his commandos down these steps to start the assault on Bindramale and his men. But they were mown down by gunmen that were hiding on both sides of the walls. He then sent in a second wave of commandos, and this time they were successful. They got down the steps, but they faced fire from not only the buildings around here, but from underground as well. Bindrawale's men suddenly appeared from manhole covers, firing their machine guns, and then disappearing into the complex's many underground passages. The army had clearly underestimated their opponents. Gyanni Puran Singh was a priest at the Golden Temple. He and the other priests weren't going to allow 500 years of prayer to be interrupted, not even by a full-scale battle. This makes him a key eyewitness to Operation Blue Star. He was in the Akal Takht when he saw Bindramale in action. ਤੇ ਭਰ ਭਰ ਕੇ ਢੇਰ ਲਾਈ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਤਾਂ ਰੰਚਕ ਮਾਤਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ 